Last week we talked about promises in ES2015. Today we're going to talk about an ES2017 edition that makes your code look a lot nicer. Async await. We've already seen how you can string together promises with dot then, but this can still lead to heavy nesting that looks a lot like callback hell. Witness. Alternately, you can chain thens like this. But in a complex app, that can rapidly lead to deep nesting or long strings of dot then blocks. Async await allows us to accomplish basically the same thing without having to go either of those routes, which can save lines and make code more readable. First, let's establish some data. Now, let's write two asynchronous functions using set timeout that resolve promises. What we're simulating here is getting some resources, say from an outside API, and then storing them in our own database. We're just using set timeout because we don't have actual API endpoints to contact via XHR. Now, we could just use the dot then method to chain these functions, but let's use async await instead. All right, let's see how that works. There we go. We get our reversed movies after a couple of seconds of waiting. Do you see what we're doing here? We declare the function as async on the first line, which allows us to use the await keyword within its body. Await does exactly what it says. It holds up the rest of the function from executing until the promise resolves. This means your variables get the values you want instead of the promise itself. If you console log a variable that's assigned to a promise without await, you get promise pending, which isn't super useful. Note that async await requires promises to work. If you have an asynchronous function that doesn't use promises, what happens when you use await is, your code generates an unresolved promise that never gets resolved by the function you're calling. It's hard to show this with set timeout because it doesn't technically return a value, but here's a slightly convoluted version using callbacks to show that it doesn't work. This is going to instantly return the promise generated by await, but which is never resolved in no promise timer. Now, of course, it helps to spell your variables correctly. Try that again. There's that promise pending that we don't want to see. So reminder that anytime you have an asynchronous function and you want to use async await, you're going to need to have promises. Last but not least, you can await on the variable instead of on the function, which slightly changes how the code runs and may speed things up. In the working example we had earlier, things took a total of about four seconds to execute because we were awaiting the return of the first two second timer and then awaiting the return of the second two second timer. That makes sense since our second function call relied on data returned by the first one. However, here's an example that fires in only about two seconds despite making two calls to a function that takes two seconds to execute. This is going to uppercase the first two items in the array. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Two seconds, even though we're running two separate two second timers. Async await is a powerful new tool to add to your toolbox, especially if you work with a lot of XHR calls, which you probably do if you're working on a single page app or in a front end framework like React or Angular. Next week, we're going to scale it back a little and take a look at two DOM manipulation functions, get query selector and get query selector all. See you then.